Oop, I have an A in there. All right. Good deal. So the thing I'm going to do is instead of uh, dropping down to a shell here, I'm going to go over to a different window and um, just log in as SSH. Uh, I'm going to SSH in as root so I have a, a nicer prompt. And, you know, when I go in to edit this, this file, um, Nano will work correctly and not have any problems rendering, which, which can sometimes happen. Uh, but since we have a key there, you know, why not use a nicer, nicer prompt? All right, so there we are, no problem. Our key that we dropped in there worked. I had no, no password prompts or anything. This went straight into the authorized key file. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, edit this uh, SSH configuration file. All right, so Vim worked just fine. I'm not sure what was going on with Nano there. But basically what we want to put in here is this gateway ports line, which is already in here. I thought I uh, deleted that previously uh, because this is not, it depends on the configuration. This may or may not be in here. But you need to put this in, so otherwise your your ports will spawn internal uh, on the local host address when you're doing your SSH tunneling. So you have to have this gateway ports. Yes. Otherwise, this will not work. This port will not be visible. It will not be open um, to any other hosts on the network. All right. I'm surprised that was still in there, but uh, that's fine. We will, just for giggles, make sure something else doesn't uh, go wrong. We're going to restart this uh, SSH service which may bump us off, but, you know, we have a key on there, so I don't really care. Like a champ. Okay. So now that we have that done, we have our two tunnels up. We've dropped the public key and we've allowed gateway ports, right? So now we're on to creating the tunnels. So the first tunnel we're going to create is a local tunnel. And really what that does is that is the local tunnel is something that you use if you have a client that wants to connect to a service. So um, what's going to happen is we're going to take this 445 port. This is the Samba or SMB port that we want to compromise on Windows. And it's going to 
come up through here, uh, through our tunnel, and to this local 9339. And it's going to be just like, just like this SMB service is running on our on our Cali box, right? So we're going to connect our Metasploit module, not right. So as I was saying, this uh, SMB is going to come up through here through our tunnel and connect to our uh, 9339 port, right, a local host. So it's just like this SMB service is running on our Cali box. So we'll point Metasploitable to, or Metasploit to our local address at port 9339. And then we're going to fire off this PS exec uh, exploit here, and that completes our tunnel, right? And it's going to drop, it's going to go through Metasploitable, hit Windows, drop our exploit. The second part of it is that now that we've dropped our exploit, it's going to, it's going to need to call back to the handler, right? So that's where the second tunnel is going to come in. But let's get this first one up and running, this local, this local tunnel. So exit off the box, the metasploitable box. We're going to say SSH L and 9339. All right, that's going to be our local port. We want it to go to the Windows box. And we want to have this. 445 service come out the other end of the tunnel, this 9339 that's going to be on our local box. Right. Okay. So this is just going to hang up the shell so I don't have a million tabs open. And then I'm going to say root. We don't even need root, really. Uh, we could use whatever. Um, I'm going to use MSF admin, since that would be a less privileged user and may not raise so many alarms, um, just to uh, stay lore friendly, as they say. And that's 25. And then put that in the background. All right. That looks good. So let's do netstat. See what we got. So we should have a local host 9339. And we do. Right there. No problem. We're going to go up to our uh, Metasploitable. And I just want to check um, the other end of that tunnel. Pipe it to less. Actually, pipe it to grep and just do 445, right? Hmm. Doesn't look right. So here are two interpreter connections right there. Hmm. 
something's fishy here. Well, I'll tell you what I expected to see. I expect to see uh, a 445 here connected to um, the 201, or connected with 201, right? So uh, my suspicion is that since we don't have any traffic going through 9339, uh, it's not it's not forwarding anything onto our Windows box, and it's not making that connection. So maybe that this is correct, and uh, there just isn't anything. There just isn't a connection to the Windows SMB server there yet. So I'm going to keep moving on. Um, so let's uh, search for our SMB PS exec. Handy dandy. Let me spell it right. All right. So our host is going to be ourselves, All right? Because we're going to go. We're going to go to this tunnel here. So this is actually going to be our target, right? Because we're going to come up to here, hit it with a PS exec, and the tunnel will forward it through. All right, so this will work, right? But we don't have a payload yet. So the payload's going to require another tunnel. Because what's going to happen is we're, we're talking to a service here, right? So we're a client. We're acting as a client, and we want to talk to a service. So we're using the local host. If we have a service that we want to offer other clients, we're going to use the remote host. So in this case, our service is the handler, right? The handler is going to be listening. So we're going to create another tunnel. And what's going to happen is our payload, which is right in here, it's going to say, I need to come out to my handler. So it's going to, we're going to point it at this, this 1234 port on Metasploitable. Uh, Metasploitable is going to say, okay, this is a tunnel, so I'm going to route this through here uh, and to this 5678. And our handler is going to be waiting right here. All right, so we're going to point our handler to our local host at 5678. And then this remote tunnel is going to forward our service over here. And so we're going to point our Windows uh, payload just at Metasploitable. And then the tunnel is going to take care of the rest. Oop. Still in draw mode here. Okay, so let's get our other tunnel up. And we're going to say we want a SSH tunnel 
and we want the remote host to have port 1234 open and we're going to serve and put our service uh, our service is going to be at our local host so that's 127.0.0.1 and that service is going to be on uh, port 5678. And again, I don't want to see the shell. Unprivileged user is just fine. <clears throat> and put it in the background. Right. So let's see what we got here. So up here we should have a port <clears throat> listening on 1234. And let's see if that's true. And sure enough it is. <clears throat> 